Pasta bakes have to be one of the most comforting meals in my opinion, so in this one we're going to be making a quick, easy and relatively cheap bolognese pasta bake. Please sit back, relax and enjoy. Alright guys, let's start this off by placing a saucepan of water onto our stovetop over a high heat, add in a large pinch of sea salt flakes to season and bring to a boil. Once boiling, add in 400 grams or 14.1 ounces of the pasta of your choice with myself using penne, give it a quick mix to prevent it from sticking and cook for 3 minutes less than what it states on your packet instructions. This can then be removed from the stovetop and poured through a sieve to drain, leaving it to do so for the time being and you can add a splash of olive oil as well if you wanted to prevent it from sticking. Now for the prep, get yourself one large brown or yellow onion to which we can slice off the tip and root, then make a nick in the skin, peeling it off and saving the scraps for a stock. We're also going to need one large unpeeled carrot that's been washed and dried, and with the onion and carrot, run them both along the largest side of a box grater to create nice thin pieces, and this is also going to help increase the flavour once cooked. Next, with four cloves of freshly peeled garlic, run them along a fine microplane or grater to create a paste which is otherwise known as minced, being sure to get out each and every little bit just to avoid that wastage. Last but not least, with 5 grams or 0.2 ounces of flat leaf parsley and 10 grams or 0.3 ounces of basil, scrunch them both into a nice tight bunch to make it easier to work with, then come through and roughly chop, which doesn't have to be perfect, just make sure there's no large leaves or stems. Now to get this cooking, place a large pot onto your stovetop over a high heat and allow it to get smoking hot. Pour in 1 tablespoon or 20 milliliters of olive oil to then add in 500 grams or 1.1 pounds of beef mince, as well as 250 grams or 8.8 .8 ounces of pork mince, then whilst being careful of the heat, break up the mince and fry for 6 minutes to get some nice color on this. As for the pot being so hot, this allows for the meat to get a slight crust and very nice brown spots rather than it going into a warm pot and start steaming on itself. Also due to the heat, keep it moving regularly, that way it won't burn. After 6 minutes, add in the grated onion as well as any juice sitting in the bowl along with the grated carrots and the minced garlic. Then break this up and mix it through well to get all of those flavours working, cooking this for 4 minutes, stirring it frequently. 4 minutes later, pour in 1 kilo or 2.2 pounds or 2.5 tins of diced tomatoes. Season to taste with 1 teaspoon or 5 grams of sea salt flakes and then hit this up with 20 cracks of black pepper. Give this another big mix to allow those flavours to become friends, ensuring all of the meat is covered in the tomatoes and then bring the mix to a boil. Once boiling, add in 2.5 tablespoons or 8 grams of dried Italian herbs. Add in the roughly chopped flat leaf parsley as well as the roughly chopped basil and for an optional addition, grate in 60 grams or 2.1 ounces of fresh Parmigiano Reggiano. Get back in there and give this a big mix through to combine everything, then reduce the heat to medium and for a quick breakdown, the dried Italian herbs contain basil, thyme, oregano, rosemary, sage, parsley, marjoram and sometimes bay leaves, so this will provide a beautiful aromatic floral flavour. The fresh herbs will of course freshen it up, partnering really well with their counterparts and the cheese is cheese, do I really need to say any more? At this stage, it's also a good idea to test for seasoning, adjusting accordingly to your preference. Now that this is nicely simmering, allow it to continue to do so for 4 minutes for those flavours to work their magic and during this stage there's no need to mix it around at all. The next step is to add in our pasta that we cooked at the beginning, remembering that it's been cooked 3 minutes less than required, then try your best not to spill it all overboard and mix the pasta through the sauce, making sure every little piece is well coated. Obviously the size of the pot does matter in this recipe as there's a few ingredients going in, but usually it's not about the size, it's how you use it. Once that's all done, this can then be removed from the stovetop and what we want to do is add in enough of the pasta mixture to fill a large baking dish by half and also I want to apologise for this being out of focus, I am waiting on a new part and right now I can't actually monitor what I'm doing. With this being half full, let's grate over some fresh parmigiano reggiano and the amount is completely up to you and we're also going to do the same with some fresh mozzarella and with both of these cheeses it's going to create a beautiful cheese string in the centre of our bake. Let's now top this off with the remaining pasta mix, filling it right to the top and pushing it down so it can hold its shape well and be nice and compact. Grate over even more Parmigiano Reggiano to create a delicious and cheesy crust and again the amounts are up to you. 
also doing the same with more mozzarella as this is the cheese that creates that amazing crust. I will also say wipe the edges of your dish removing any sauce or cheese to prevent it from burning which can then be a pain to clean. Once that's all done, make your way over to a preheated oven set to 180 degrees Celsius or 350 degrees Fahrenheit and bake for 20 minutes or until the cheese is deeply golden on top. 20 minutes later, let's get this bad boy out, turning off the oven as we no longer need it, place it onto a heat resistant surface and allow it to sit for 15 minutes to firm up. To serve this up, place your portions on a plate or in a bowl or eat it straight out of the baking dish if you really wanted to. Then grate over some Parmigiano Reggiano to freshen this up. Garnish it with some thinly sliced basil leaves for a nice contrast in colour and freshness, then drizzle over some extra virgin olive oil for that nice finishing touch, leaving us with this beautiful, cheesy and delicious pasta bake that is surely going to impress anyone you serve it to, even yourself. The only thing left to do now is to make this all worthwhile, and that is we can then dig in. So there we have it. This recipe right here serves four to six people, and like most of my recipes, it can easily be double, tripled, and so on, or halved if you wanted to make less. To store it, you can place it in the fridge in an airtight container for up to four days, or in the freezer in an airtight container for up to six months. And to reheat it, you can place it back in the oven, set on 180 degrees Celsius or 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Just heat it up for about 15 to 20 minutes, just making sure that center is nice and hot. Alternatively, you can place it in the microwave, just do whatever's easiest for you. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that like button, comment, share, do all of that stuff. It really does help my channel out and consider subscribing along with hitting that bell notification next to it so you never miss when I upload. Thanks for watching everyone, stay safe and enjoy.